Hey everyone, it's Seth, and today we're going to talk about posture, but not in the way that you're probably used to thinking about it. We're not going to be going through a series of cues about the head is here, and the shoulders are here, and the hips are like this, and nothing like that. Instead, we're going to be looking at an overall perspective on posture, which you can use in just about any situation to find more comfort and more readiness for action which is really at the center of what we're talking about. Okay, so to begin, I'm actually going to turn my chair sideways so you can see a particular thing. Okay, so here I am, I'm resting in my chair. What do you think, is this good posture? Well, probably doesn't look so great, but I wanna call your attention to a particular thing, which is just where I'm sitting and the fact that I'm using the backrest. Now, if you imagine there was no backrest, obviously I couldn't sit like this. I would just simply fall backwards onto the floor. So compared to that, if I were to come to the front of the chair, this may be more difficult. I don't have that backrest to rely on, but I have to find my sit bones. I have to find my skeleton. And there's, there's more we can say about the skeleton, about using the chair or not, but I want to give you a very simple framework for thinking about posture. And that idea would be that if I have quote unquote good posture, it means I'm ready. I'm ready for anything. I can move in any direction that I want to without needing to make a special preparation, without really hesitating. In other words, I can be spontaneous. I can go here, I can go there, I can go over here. So with that idea in mind, what do we usually do when we're sitting in a chair? Well, we might be eating, talking with someone, we might be working and moving around like this, okay? But then eventually we're going to want to stand up, right? The next place we're gonna to wanna to be is up out of the chair. Well, so if I'm on the backrest, what would be required for me to stand up? You can see that I'm gonna actually probably have to shift just to be ready to stand up. Okay, so that's that preparation I was talking about. Whereas if I'm already here at the front of the chair, then I can come straight up. Now, still depends on how I'm sitting at the front of the chair. If I stand up in such a way where I have to kind of make a big effort, that's different than if I can come straight up. Okay. So the act of coming up into standing is a subject for another whole video that I'm probably not going to get into in this particular video, but just to make the simple point, this, this is a position where I'm not supporting myself. The chair is supporting me and I'm not ready. I'm not ready for the next thing. Whereas if I come to the front of the chair and I sit here and I can really feel my skeleton, now I have more possibilities. All right, facing forward again. So we're gonna to continue to work with this idea of good posture as having the ability to move in any direction that you want to without really having to think about it, without having to make a special preparatory move. And as you can see, I'm sitting at the front of my chair now. And there are many ways we can explore this, but let's just stick with this simple idea. Could I go in any direction? Now, a fun way I like to think about this is imagining that I'm sitting here and for whatever reason, maybe I did something bad, I am surrounded by people holding tomatoes and they are throwing them at me. Now to give myself just a little chance, I'm gonna slow down time so everything's happening slow. But if you're sitting here, just, you can, you can try this, you imagine here comes a tomato, right? And so I need to get out of the way. But as soon as I do, here comes another one and I need to get out of the way of that. And so you just imagine maybe one is falling from the ceiling, or even if I was up on a balcony, someone's throwing one from down below. Who knows, right? But if you're following along, just keep playing with this idea. Think of different parts, like someone throws one right at my right knee, so I have to get the right knee out of the way. Someone throws it at my left foot. Maybe I need to pick it up. So you can see that this is a bit free form, but the idea is that this idea of the tomatoes coming is exposing, let's say, vulnerabilities. 
Someone throws it right at my butt on the left side. Maybe I have to kind of get my butt off the chair. Okay, so I'm just playing here. I'm kind of going one direction or another. And I might be feeling that certain directions aren't as comfortable for me. So that one, if, if something comes here and I duck down like this, I have one feeling, but something comes here and I duck down like that, uh, I felt a little strange, something going on. So maybe I'll, I'll just compare those for a minute. This is, this is pretty easy. I like how this feels, but uh, this is a little different. So I could maybe make this movement a few times. Think of it different ways. Okay, so you can play like this. Now, in order to mix it up and to give you some new challenges, we're going to take this same game into a couple of different kind of situations. The first one is we're going to change a little bit your perception of the space around you. And the way you're going to do this is simply by covering one eye. Now, of course, if you hold your arm up like this, that's going to change a lot of things. If you're capable of just keeping the one eye shut, that's what I'll suggest you do. So now I'm just looking out of my right eye and I need to dodge and weave and get out of the way. And as you do this, you're trying to keep your breath as calm as you can. So again, if the tomatoes are flying, we can make it in slow motion. But I can also notice I've closed my left eye, but I don't want to squeeze my left eye too tight. So I can also use my eyes to sort of gauge my, my sensitivity and, and that I'm not over-efforting. Okay, so after doing that for a little while with one eye closed, I'm just going to sit and feel how I'm doing. Okay, and then I might cover the other eye or simply close the other eye. And obviously when I do this, this side of the room is harder for me to see. This side is clearer. So just see how that affects my reaction to these different imaginary tomatoes that are coming from different directions. Now, another thing that I'll want to keep in mind as I'm playing these games is how am I using my feet on the floor? If I go one way, I'm sort of pushing off of the floor in one direction or another. And underneath, I'm also using my pelvis and I'm rolling in different directions over the surface of the chair. Okay, so you can play with the initial idea, you're dodging the tomatoes, then you have one eye closed, then you have the other eye closed. If you're ready for a little bit more of a challenge, a fun thing that you can do is only sit halfway on the chair. So you can scoot over, and now the left side of my pelvis is on the chair, but the right side is hanging out. It's out there and I've got to be really clear with my right foot, my right leg, how I'm supporting myself. Uh, but I can actually dip my pelvis below the chair, at least the right, the right side of my pelvis. So again, I'm just, I have a different support now, but I have to get out of the way of something coming at me this way, something coming that way. Maybe I have to lift the leg again or lift the other leg. So, there are more kind of specific movements and practices I could give you for this kind of thing, but I think it's just kind of fun to realize that the basic idea is that I want to be able to go anywhere and then set up different kinds of situations for me to do that. So then, of course, I might pause. It's always good to have a little bit of a pause as you engage in a practice like this after one variation and then to the next just to see how things feel. I have a very different feeling in my two different sit bones, the one that was on the chair and the one that wasn't. And so now I'm going to come over to the other side and I'm going to play this game one more time. Get out of the way, get out of the way, and also slow motion can be good not just to give you time to get out of the way of the tomato, but to really feel what is the movement I'm making? Could I pause? Could I change directions? Maybe there are two or three tomatoes coming, and so it becomes more of a continual movement of needing to change here and there, but feeling even when I change, if you hear my voice, I'm trying to keep it steady, and that kind of gives you a sense of 
my breathing so you don't have to be talking as I'm doing while you do this, but if you can keep the breath simple as you change your shape, as you move through space in different ways, that's another indicator. And so you might play with these things for a while and then just feel as you sit, how ready are you now to go in one direction, to go in the other direction. And just in terms of those really traditional ideas of posture, about being upright and being aligned, and I think most importantly, feeling comfortable as you're upright, see how you do after exploring these different relationships and these different ways of relating to the surface that's under you. And you may well find um, a really new sense of what it is to be upright. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you like this, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment. You can head over to movewithseth.com if you want to take this a step further, get my free training on developing high quality attention, which will really help you to take your movement practice to the next level. Take care.